Hello, I'm Malcolm Cox, and this is your Tuesday teaching tip for Tuesday the 16th of May 2017. And today we're talking about apply it to yourself. In other words, before we apply what we've studied to other people, teaching and preaching to them, we must apply it to ourselves. Now we know the basic principle that of course the quickest way to ineffectiveness and lack of authenticity and authority is to be a hypocrite, to teach one thing and behave another way. But sometimes I think because we're uh, on the conveyor belt of teaching and preaching and studying for that, we forget to, before we get up there, to apply this to ourselves. And it came home to me recently because of a, a rather uh, embarrassing incident that happened. Let me set the scene. I'm writing a booklet for young Christians to help them in the early days of their Christian faith. And I'm going through the book of Luke and I'm in Luke chapter 22. And in Luke chapter 22, we see several scenes that test Jesus. For example, Judas comes up to him in the garden and betrays him with a kiss. And how does Jesus respond? He doesn't slap Jesus, which I would have thought was justifiable. No, he, uh, he asks him the question, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? He asks the question, very deep question, and certainly would have made Judas think, I hope, or perhaps he was hoping that G Judas would think about his behavior. But he asks a question, and then uh, he's arrested, and the, the people come with swords and clubs, but he does not fight back. He, in fact, heals the person whose ear is uh, cut off, his right ear is cut off, and Jesus doesn't say, well, serves you right. He says, no, let me heal that. And then Peter disowns Jesus. And instead of, and we know that Jesus must have heard because he turns and looks at Peter uh, as that happens rather than yell at Peter, how could you, Peter? He just looks at him. And what struck me from that is the poise of Jesus, the peace that he has, the uh, clarity with which he is content to go through with the plan of God for his life and not react, not seek vindicate, uh, be vindictive or seek justice for himself. An incredible peace and incredible self-control. And so I wrote about that and I felt good about what I'd done. And then before I went out to pray, I noticed that my broadband was misbehaving. So I picked up the phone. I phoned my broadband provider who shall remain nameless and spoke to the person on duty about the problems and they were not giving me very good answers, at least not ones that satisfied me. And I got more and more short-tempered. I got more and more monosyllabic in my answers. My tone became very negative and, uh, and harsh and I, I got very upset. I, I eventually spoke to one of their managers and told them what I thought needed to be done and it still wasn't sorted out, so I had to put the phone down and I went out to pray and I was out praying about this and that and the other and it suddenly struck me how unlike Jesus my behavior was to that person in the broadband call center. I felt terrible and I went home, I, I prayed about that, and I said sorry to God and I, I couldn't apologize to the person involved, but I had to make another call that same day of complaint to another company about something else and that time I behaved in a very different way, I hope a bit more Christ-like. But how amazing it is that at, say, 6.45 in the morning, I'm writing about Jesus, and at 6.50 in the morning, I'm talking to somebody on the phone in a way that's not like Jesus. And so I think it's so important for us who preach and teach, as we use this, that we stop, that we pause for a moment and say to ourselves and ask God to help us apply this to my life. God, help me apply it. Help me to, to let it sink into my heart so that, so that when I teach it to other people, it will come from a place where I know it's part of me and it really is in me and it's meaningful to me. Perhaps what we need to do then is as we study, we study, then we pray well before we get round to preaching, not just in the morning of the sermon or the lesson or the day of the lesson, but, but each day we study. Perhaps if you're studying in the mornings, for your next sermon or lesson, that each day after you've finished preparing, that you say, God, help me apply this to my life, my behavior today. I pray that this will sink into my mind, that this will sink into my heart and affect me today so that I can then preach in a way that's meaningful. How about that as a thought? Apply it to yourself before you go and apply it to the rest of the world. Well, I hope that's helpful. Please let me know what you think. What helps you to make sure that what you read and study about actually does have an effect on you before you teach it to other people? What helps you? Have you got any thoughts, any techniques, any tips? I'd love to hear them, and I'm sure other people would too. 
So you can leave me an email, um, mccx at mac.com, or you can leave a message wherever you see or hear this recording. And uh, please spread the word about these episodes if you find them helpful. Uh, you can subscribe uh, on the YouTube website, you can leave comments, and you can um, uh, let other people know. Just copy the link and send it to your friends on Facebook and Twitter and anywhere else that you think might be useful. So thank you if you've already done that, but please consider doing so if you haven't already. Anyway, until the next time, I hope you have a terrific Tuesday and a wonderful week. God bless.